cat. He's got the X Factor, it's Ollie Murs. North America's funniest, it's Russell Peters. And their team captain, John Richardson. And facing them tonight, Pussycat Doll, it's Kimberly Wyatt. Stand up guy, it's Matthew Crosby. And their team captain, Sean Locke. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 80% of all pictures on the internet are of naked women? Who knew? <laughs> Men knew. 7% <laughs> of Britons have got in trouble telling lies at work. In my experience, they get particularly upset when they find out you're not actually a doctor and that isn't actually a thermometer. <laughs> And apparently the human heart creates enough pressure to squirt blood 30 foot isn't the type of thing you should write in a Valentine's card. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It was Thanksgiving this week, so in celebration, it's our panellists' job to guess the top three ways America has changed the world. Sean, your team first. How do you think America has changed the world? Is it they went to the moon? Americans went, America went to the moon, which no one, nobody else has done. It's an incredible but achievement. It is, it's an incredible achievement. It's, it's kind of the greatest thing mankind has done. Mm. I don't know if I believe the whole moon thing. You don't believe that we went to the it's moon? definitely up there. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a show in Houston last year, and I was about to get on the bus, and there was these three Indian kids waiting for a picture. And I was like, and they're like, I go, yeah, let's take a picture. And she goes, you know, you're very popular in our university. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. He's allowed <laughs> to do that voice. <laughs> well, that's how she sounded. If she didn't, I wouldn't, you know, I'd be like, well, you're very popular. But like, so, <laughs> so I go, I go, oh, cool. What are you taking? She goes, uh, astrophysics. And I go, wow. So, have we been to the moon? And she goes, they say we've been to the moon. And I go, well, yeah, they said it, but have we been to the moon? She goes, they said we've been to the moon. <laughs> I go, have we or have we not been to the moon? She goes, it's not physically possible to go to the moon as a human. Like, the, there's, the, she said the radiation is so thick after you get to 700 miles above the Earth that our skin would fall off. Well, I think we've got to try it, and I nominate Ollie. <laughs> yeah, but well, because you might not come back. <laughs> oh, you're too adorable. Look at you. He's not fake. But surely, Russell, <laughs> there's been so many programmes exploding the, uh, the conspiracy theories around it. Not all astrophysicists are sort of in the thrall of NASA and also, the Also, the astrophysicist you met was getting a photo with you as you walked onto a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of the finest astrophysicists aren't waiting by the bus. <laughs> you look back at the time and they were in the space race with Russia, so they were trying to beat Russia to the moon. Well, and also, it was the Cold back. War yeah, they never, were showing off. Yeah, we've never yeah. been back. If they have been back, they've been there. They didn't just go once. Times. They went seven times, but they haven't been for 25 years, I think, since 1974. Well, what's the point? There's nothing there. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I went to Basildon once. Once. <laughs> I'm not going back there. It's like, I'm probably Basildon. <laughs> Kimberly, you're a proud American, right? Yes. Now, the moon mission, they're saying it didn't happen. It, it did happen, right? I would like to believe that it did. Hmm. Well, did. even that seems a bit non-committal, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> But let's take it, let's take it as read that they landed on the moon. That is an incredible achievement, isn't it? Yeah. Matthew, yes. your thoughts? Yeah. Well, also, you can, um, you can now go up to space, can't you? There's, there's, uh, sort of, if, if members of the public are allowed yeah, to... Yeah, Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic, you can go up to, sort of, zero gravity. Yeah, he says, um, anyone can go up, costs 200 grand, so literally, anyone can go up. Yeah. <laughs> That's good news. So, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe we'll have, like, you know, civilians on the moon soon. It could happen. Yeah, and if Ryanair do it, you'll end up on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if the space race is one of the ways America changed the world. <laughs> yes, the space race! <laughs> Before mankind commits to the astronomical expense of returning to the moon, we need to ask ourselves some searching questions. Like, how much cheese do we really need? <laughs> <laughs> OK, John, how do you think America's changed the world? Music, music. Yeah, sure. That's, oh, that's a good music. Some music. Roll. We'll go with hip hop too. Hip hop. Yep. The hippity hop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the what? The hippity hop. That was uh, the least uh, funky thing I've ever heard in my life. 
I'll tell you what my bugbear with the musics, right, that they do. Stop calling it the musics because <laughs> <laughs> you're even making the unhit music. people feel uncomfortable. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> Enjoy your musics, do all that. But don't don't screw with grammar as well. Like rock n roll <laughs> was the first time it was accepted, like, well, we can't say and. We can't say rock and so that's rock and and now it's spread to fish and the chips. <laughs> There's a reason it's not Matthew, Mark, Luke, Nick, John, because <laughs> there's nothing wrong with saying rock and roll just to make yourself sound cooler, just because rock sounds cool, but I'm not having it. <laughs> well, of course, Elvis is credited as, as kicking off rock and roll, but of course, these days, Ollie, people don't even know what show he was on. <laughs> they did Frank Sinatra as well, though, Michael Jackson. Michael, Michael Jackson? You said Michael Jackson was a, was a, was a big influence King on of you. pop, yeah. King of pop. I think he's influencing any artist in this industry. Massive. Not, not just in this industry. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really held back. Right, no, say what you want about him. He was a hell of a paedophile. Um... <laughs> Who's the biggest influence on you? Or, or the Pussycat Dolls? Uh, I mean, growing up as a dancer, Janet Jackson, Paul Abdul, Michael Jackson. But surely it's Madonna, isn't it, for female artists? Because she was the first one to do that thing. She had the headset on, first one to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all do that now, don't they? The lady dancer, they move around, and then they go... <laughs> I don't know what that means. I wait till I get you home. Right? <laughs> Madonna, she's a very powerful influence, isn't she, on the ladies? I think Lady Gaga's trying to take yeah, her place, right? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, I like Lady Gaga. She's a good-looking fella. Way to come out <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think Lady Gaga's like, you know, again, it's sort of quite iconic. They're good at coming up with sort of iconic. Pussy music's shit, well. though, isn't it? Our music's shit, isn't it? <laughs> are, you, what, are you kidding? The, 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 You're yes, kidding, right? Reason. Poker like, face. Ella Fitzgerald. <laughs> She's Ella bluffing with her muffin. Yeah. <laughs> what, what more do you want from the side? Must have been the, the greatest singer of the last uh, century, Ella Fitzgerald, right? She's such a good singer, she didn't feel the need at some point to think, should I cover myself in meat? <laughs> is the song, does the song need that? You know, there's a certain amount you have to do to, like, you're distracting people from the music because you've got lobster on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they won't listen to this bit where I can't sing. They just look at the lobster going... <laughs> <laughs> But there's so many artists out there. I think artists are forced to find ways to be recognised and be seen so that their music can then be accepted. To be oh. fair, Elvis, Elvis was amazing, but a lot of his notoriety came from rotting thin air. Well, he... <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point well made. It's just an earlier, you know... That is the single worst Elvis impression I've ever seen. <laughs> can we have your Elvis again? That looks like... <laughs> that looks like the closing credits of Last of the Summer Wine when they're going down a hill. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if rock and roll music is up there. <laughs> yes, rock and roll. Rock and roll was born in 1955 with Bill Haley's Rock Around the Clock and was beaten to death in 2009 by Joe McKeldry. <laughs> you were robbed. Where is he now, eh? I don't know, he's probably at home watching this. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Joe McKeldry. <laughs> He's joking, of course, he's driving the minicab. Um, <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. How else has America changed the world? So fast, oh. aren't it? <laughs> it's amazing. Time. Should have been in the Wild West. <laughs> if it was buzzers rather than guns. Uh, <laughs> uh, the food. The fast food. <laughs> Quick food, fast food, straight, no messing around. Just fast. Mm. Straight through, got your food off, gone. Straight through, I think, describes it aptly. Yeah. <laughs> Kimberly, you, you, you look as if you eat, you eat an awful lot of fast food, clearly. Mm. No to fast food. No to fast food. No to fast food. What, what? Organic and natural is the way to go. Stay in the produce aisle. But surely all vegetables are organic. No, but they're not. You really do have to look for the label that says organic. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy. No, uh, it's true. I think all it means is organic, chemicals. but organic, technically, it means more expensive and muddy. <laughs> <laughs> In Los Angeles, don't you, Russell? I, I do. Okay, so so favorite fast food joint? I, I really don't do that much fast food, but I'll go Mexican fast food if anything. Del Taco, good gas. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not only delicious when you eat it, but also afterwards you go, oh, <laughs> fragrant. <laughs> <laughs> no smell, just gassy. Just gassy. <laughs> loud. It's loud. <laughs> it 
It's like a Mexican well, coming out of your ass, really. Is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes out, does it mow your lawn? <laughs> Do you eat fast food? You don't look as if you eat fast food. Are you allowed fast to food, eat fast yeah. food? Does Simon tell you you can't eat it? <laughs> no. I'm trying to just keep the timber down, you see. Try and keep in good shape. The timber down? Yeah, the timber. <laughs> don't say keep the timber down and do that, because people will think you're talking about something else. <laughs> There's a wood connotation yes. to timber. <laughs> Little baby trying to keep the timber down. <laughs> well, surprisingly, that's not in our top three. People criticise McDonald's, but if it wasn't for McDonald's, where else would we take a shit in the town centre? <laughs> right, fingers on buzzers. One more thing to get. Uh, the world of movies and uh, Hollywood and uh, glitz and glamour. I've been to Hollywood. Of course you have. Look at you. I went out there. <laughs> on a geography field trip. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've been to the... Um, uh, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, you haven't got a star on the Walk of Fame, have you? The Pussycat Dolls haven't got a Walk of, no, we don't. Walk of Fame star. Because I, I walked along, sort of checking out all the names, and like Rin Tin Tin's got one, and Lassie, <laughs> and Godzilla. <laughs> like, who are they going to get next? The Lurpak bloke with the trombone. I mean, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like anyone can have a, a, a star on the Walk of Fame. The problem with Hollywood is it's too cool and it just makes your real life look shit. Like, at once in my life, I would like to be able to do a speech like he does in Gladiator. Where he turns around and does all that, but you can't. Member of the AA, owner of a <laughs> napkin microwave, and I will have my pudding. <laughs> In this room or the next. <laughs> I find I think what Hollywood has done to a, to a cinema in one way has ruined it is because all the food people take in, people who never normally litter anywhere. In cinema, they just finish their popcorn, they just go... <laughs> boom, <like that. laughs> with cans go... <laughs> boom, <like that. laughs> People just chuck shit everywhere, and the lights come up, and it looks like your Dale Farm. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Kimberly, the Pussycat Dolls started in, in sort of Hollywood, didn't they? Was yeah, it? in Los Angeles. Before I was even in the group, it was a dance troupe for about ten years at the Viper Room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back when Johnny Depp owned it, he was actually the person that told Robin to give it a name. And that's where Pussycat Dolls was born. You were number, you were number three in the Pussycat Dolls, aren't you? Number three? Well, I, I, sorry, I ordered it in my head. <laughs> have, you, have you made any films out there, Russell? You're in I Hollywood. have. I was, I've been a couple. You're in a, Source Code, I was you? in Source Code. Very cool. Oh, yeah, you were in Source Thanks. Code. You were in Source Code. Have you seen Source Code? Nobody. Yeah, you're in Source Code, I'm the, and you played basically yourself. I, you played, I played quite a, a grumpy I, man on a train. I played yeah. a, a grumpy version of me. You got the best line in the whole film, I think. Which one? I'm on my way to an asshole convention. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I recognise this geezer from somewhere. He's <laughs> watching that door recently. Let's have a look and see if Hollywood is one of the ways America has changed the world. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, Hollywood. If you're a pretty girl with a dream, then you should go to Hollywood. If that dream is to lie on a couch while being screwed by a fat, bald man with a cigar, then so much the better. <laughs> <laughs> so those were the top ways America changed the world. But other things that didn't quite make our list, America gave us social networking. By the age of 23, computer programmer Mark Zuckerberg had created Facebook, and amazingly, within just three short years, he'd lost his virginity. <laughs> Starting wars, America entered the Second World War two years late. Stung by the criticism, it's made sure it got in nice and early with every war since, by starting them. <laughs> And America gave us Disneyland. Of course, the best ride at Disney is the girl that works in the toffee apple kiosk. <laughs> at the end of that round, Sean, Matthew and Kimberly have two points. John, Ollie and Russell have one. <laughs> That's it for part one. See you after the break. Pick of the polls. Johnson, what do you like the look of? I should do that. Look, look at that. 
You're going for the man doing karate. <laughs> There's yeah. a clip to illustrate your question. Have a look at this. Pretty impressive stuff. The sisters of the Holy Family serve what is perhaps the most crime-ridden area of Philadelphia. Their orphanage is in constant danger of vandalism and burglary. Unwilling to give up after some 80 years of service to the community, the sisters have turned to the Old Testament for a solution. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. and defensive but should human life or chastity be at stake the good sisters are well prepared for sterner measures it's funny you think they use uh, nunchucks <laughs> nunchucks come on yeah. um, okay your related question most men would rather be good at martial arts than diy true or false well why can't you have both <laughs> yeah, you, you, Just total all-round guy. Yeah, you put up a shelf, mm. then take it straight down. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. What is DIY? Mm. What is? Stop doing DIY and kung fu at the same time. Kimberly has a question. Kimberly, what is DIY? It's putting up shelves. You know, DIY. Do it yourself. Like carpentry. Yes, carpentry. Yeah, carpentry. Joinery. You know, I mean, all kinds of things. Plumbing, you can do a bit of plumbing in it. OK. What do you call that in America, then? Handyman. Handyman. Mm -hmm. Or a Mexican. <laughs> There's no real benefits to being good at DIY, whereas, you know, martial arts... There's no benefit to being good at DIY. DIY is impressive, I think. If you can do... I'm quite, I've got nothing. I've got no ability to change plugs and do things around the house. And... It's emasculating. Yeah, but if you're going to get robbed in an alleyway, you don't want to be like, hey, I'll build you a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. can put my wallet on there. You've got a really high shelf, yeah. you won't be able to reach it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Mm. And also, you get to make those noises, don't you? With, 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 with martial arts, like... <laughs> and you only make those noises if you're really bad at DIY. <laughs> Do you become Irish when you do DIY? Yeah. <laughs> do you do any martial arts? Just a little bit when I was younger, yeah. What, what did you used to do? Just martial arts, yeah. Oh! <laughs> no, sorry, oh, we're talking sorry, about fighting off. rather than just cleaning windscreens. <laughs> <laughs> what, was it mixed martial arts? Was it karate? Was it...? Just, no, it's I just want to know what I'm dealing with if things kick off between them. <laughs> it'll kick off, it'll be fine. But what, what do the women prefer, though? Martial arts or DIY? Yeah, martial arts. Martial arts, yeah, the DIY, they Someone came in pretty quick, though. They seem keener. <laughs> <laughs> they seem more desperate. <laughs> it's DIY short-term with a boyfriend, isn't it? And then martial arts long-term when you've got a nice house to protect. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you ever... Got, I mean, cos presumably with the dancing, you're, you become very fit and you become very flexible and stuff. Have you ever tried any martial arts? Have you ever...? I've done you, kickboxing. You've done kickboxing? Mm -hmm. So you could beat someone up? Yes. Only if it's a box. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So, Shawnstein, what, what are you going to go for? What do you think people I, would prefer? I think uh, most men would rather be good at martial arts. OK. You're going to go... You're going martial arts. What, what do you think you're going to go for, John? Well, I think it's DIY, because you would save money then, wouldn't you? And people are tight, so... <laughs> <laughs> DIY. OK, I can tell you the answer is false. 62% of men would rather be good at DIY than martial arts. They're right. <laughs> In a fight, I let my fist do the talking. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your question. Worst thing about shopping for clothes? Women. Oh. <laughs> you don't like shopping with...? No, you just... When you go out with women, it's always a bit of a... 
I'm sure the other guys are here will vouch for me. You're crazy. It's great. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> they come out and they look at a different dress and go, oh, my God, that's totally different, that outfit. And... <laughs> you think, well, I don't know about that one, cos I don't know... <laughs> Try the first yeah. one on again. <laughs> if you're lucky, you can see a little crack in Joe's room and see somebody's knickers. <laughs> That is the that best. Is, that's the best thing ever, but you have to go out shopping a lot to get that. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to happen on one on every tenth trip, you're going to get that. Oh, but when it happens, a yeah. bit... Oh. Yeah. A well-placed mirror and a bit of weird side boob. Yeah, oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> Somebody's casually forgotten and they've bent over and knocked the curtain back and you just got, like, maybe two seconds of it and you just go, Ah, that's why... That's why I'm alive! <laughs> <laughs> Do you, like, do you like shopping? I'm not the biggest shopper ever. I hate trying things on. That's what puts me off. I always think it's weird, weird trying things on because it only really tells you what it looks like when you're standing up. Mm -hmm. and it's a bit different when you... If you sit down, you kind of, you know... <laughs> 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 well, OK, if I suck everything in and stand here in front of a mirror at a weird angle, this looks delightful. <laughs> they should have loads of different things in there for you to see how you look on them. For example, they have, like, a bicycle. And you could... <laughs> 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 Like a swing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this looks so good on the swing. I don't like at the moment. There's um, shirtless men standing outside shops, sort of intimidating me. It, it, it's an American thing, isn't it? Where Abercrombie they... and Fitch. Yeah, Abercrombie exactly. and Fitch. It's a bit like saying, "Look, you never look like this. Cover yourself up, mate." <laughs> John, do you, do you shop ever? No, I just have to wait until someone my size dies. <laughs> I bought a pair of shorts from a charity shop once. And I, just, I wasn't sure about it because they were 150. I like, mm. <laughs> Got them home. 20 pound note. <laughs> <laughs> Best day of my life. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a clue. It's uh, bad for your confidence, I would say. Oh, it's the intimidating shop staff. No, no, rude shop is size. Your size. I will, I will give you that. I'll give you that. The uh, the correct answer is not finding anything that fits. Mm. That's actually why the London riots went on for three days, because a lot of people ended up looting the wrong size trainers. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are John, Ollie and Russell have two points, Sean, Matthew and Kimberly have three points, they're the winners! <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. If you want more, tune in to 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut on Sunday. That's it from us, Good night.